Dr. Anthony Fauci is again hitting out against those who say he mishandled the COVID-19 pandemic response. When asked to answer to his critics by the New York Times, the former NIH head said, quote, when people say Fauci shut down the economy, it wasn't Fauci. The CDC was the organization that made those recommendations. I happen to be perceived as the personification of the recommendations, but show me a school that I shut down and show me a factory that I shut down. Never, I never did. I gave a public health recommendation that echoed the CDC's recommendation, and people made a decision based on that. But I never criticized the people who had to make the decisions one way or the other. This was a fascinating interview, not just on this subject, but I guess we should, should start here. There's a lot of interesting things right. he said, and the interviewer, um, David Wallace Wells, David Wallace did Wells a did a job. great job. Uh, politely and articulately putting forth a lot of criticisms that we've had and others have had of Fauci. Yeah, on the schools thing, look, I think what Fauci is saying is is not, it's not incorrect. Mm -hmm. It is true that he gave guidance. He is not a legislator, he's not a governor, he's not a mayor, he's not um, a school supervisor. The actual shutdowns uh, were done by people on his recommendation and on CDC recommendations. And he did, at, at least I think in the tr at beginning with Trump, he was a little clear that he's like, well, I'm giving, I'm giving the public health recommendation, and if you want to hear the economic recommendation and the and the learning recommendation and everything else, but even the public health recommendation, I mean, look, it it came to totally dominate all other. But but I'm saying even the public health recommendation isn't wouldn't necessarily dictate or or make the case for shutting down schools as long as they were shut down. Because here's the thing, look, there was a point in, in time where we didn't know as much about the course of the disease, and we didn't have vaccines, and there were, there were things that changed along the way, so I'm not trying to fault people for coming yeah. to conclusions made in relative ignorance. However, at a certain point, it was clear that there was relatively low risk for young people, that there was a protective value of having had COVID already, um, and the recommendations to keep schools closed were, were based on public health recommendations that I think actually were not accurate. And it doesn't seem right. like he's taking responsibility for that aspect schools of it. Schools were closed when, at a for weeks at a time period where most other things were not closed. Yeah. Even though the threat to children was lower. Was lower. And that goes into another thing. There, they have an exchange here on masks that is very fascinating, yeah. where, uh, where David Wallace Wells posits that Look, that he thinks masks do work, but unless you're wearing them so rigorously to a degree that almost no one is capable of doing. Well, I wouldn't say capable, but nobody has been even encouraged to do. Um, There's been no public mask fittings. There's been, there's been no real advice about high quality masks. High quality masks have not been distributed to the public. All of those things, but but sure. Um, it, it's only making a 10% difference otherwise. That well, is contrary to what was said through most of the pandemic when it was wear a mask, any mask, you don't have to be too particular about it. Now We now know that was doing almost nothing. Well, I, we should, we should um, uh, be specific about what was, was actually said there. Um, the, so what was said was that the mask absolutely work if the appropriate mask was worn popular, properly here, here. To be clear, I'm not someone, he says, who doesn't think masks work. I think the science and the data show that they do work, but that they aren't perfect, and that at the population level, the effect can be somewhat small. In what was probably our best study from Bangladesh, in places where mask use tripled, positive tests were reduced by less than 10 percent. That's Wallace Wells saying that. Yeah. yeah. And then Fauci says, it's a good point in general. I disagree with your premises, premise a bit. From a broad public health standpoint, at the population level, masks work at the margins, maybe 10 percent. For an individual who religiously wears a mask, a well-fitted KN95 or N95, it's not at the margin. It really does work. Yeah, that's, that's what he's saying. And that's, I, I don't understand why that keeps being thrown out there as a gotcha. People who Because that's not support, what they said throughout most of the pandemic. No, no, no. But that's not mass. What do you mean? Work. No, no, no. That's, what they, that's not what they said. Correct. I'm not disagreeing okay. with that. But what I'm saying is different. And what mask advocates have been saying forever is different, which is that high quality masks work. And studies that show that low quality masks don't work keep getting bandied about as this argument that masks don't work. No, your crap mask that we've been telling you not to wear this whole time doesn't work. Who's and it's, the we? You, Brianna Joy Gray? It's not, it's not 
Dr. Fauci. No, that's, I'm agreeing with that okay. point, that the health authorities were negligent in not telling people the truth about masks. That low-quality masks, those silly bandanas they had us tying around our ears with scrunchies in the early days, were not doing much of anything at all, and that high-quality masks do work. What I'm objecting to is the conflation of the idea that low-quality masks don't do much with the idea that high-quality masks doesn't work, or as you kind of phrased it a second ago, that it is kind of impossible, or I forget what word you use, I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but that it is, it is, it is unlikely that we can ever reach the ma mask um, uh, uh, usage rates or the, the type of the, the mask application that would actually have tangible Well, the reason I say that here. is it, it goes into what they discuss elsewhere in this interview, which, again, is great. Everyone should go read it, which is that, if, and Fauci concedes here that, because he starts out by saying the American response was so bad, so many people died, and then David Wallace Wells says, but look, like, there wasn't actually that much difference in, you know, some of the island nations, uh, nations of, of, uh, of East Asia did w better for a while, yeah. but a lot of our peer European countries ended up having outcomes that aren't all that different. They didn't use policies that, 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 that were that different. They didn't mask themselves so, again, so religiously that they substantially reduced um, their deaths. Maybe they had fewer deaths because they have healthier populations seems to be the main difference uh, than America does. But, and then Fauci says, you know, you're right. <laughs> Honestly, it, it, it was all, it was pretty bad all the way around. And yeah, he, he attributes that. that to the virus. And then that makes me think, well, why are we all saying we could have just done everything better? And he seems to then concede when pushed on this that, you know, it was a really bad virus and we were always going to have a bad time of it. Yeah, I mean, he says that we, first Fauci says, well, we were the, one of the worst, and Wallace Wells actually corrects them, we're the 40th worst, which is maybe we would want to be ranked better right. as a country with as many resources as we have. But honestly, the differences between the people at that level are, the, the country's outcomes are very marginal. Right. Um, I, I was really interested in this pushback that David Wallace Wells uh, gave to Fauci, specifically about the lab leak phenomenon. Um, Wells asks him, he basically says, I would have trouble sleeping at night if there was even like a small chance that the this pandemic was the result of the EcoHealth grant and the, the work that was done at this Wuhan lab. He says, I think that might weigh on me a bit, even if I were absolutely sure I had done everything I had done with the best intentions. Fauci seems to bristle a little at this idea that he shouldn't be sleeping well at night, and he responds, now you're saying things that are a little bit troublesome to me, that I need to go to bed tonight worrying that NIH-funded research was responsible for a pandemic origins. Wallace Wells says, I'm not saying you need to do anything. I'm putting myself in your shoes and telling you what I think it would mean to me. And Fauci replies, well, I sleep fine. I sleep fine. Yes, and they get into a little bit of this argument about gain-of-function research where, again, and this is not the first time now I've heard Fauci do this, which makes me suspect if this is going to ultimately end up to be the case, um, saying that, well, look, you're, if, if, this, if, if the pandemic's origin was researchers went to a bat cave, collected a bat sample, and then that bat bit the researcher, mm -hmm. and then that, spread, that caused COVID, the pandemic, he's saying, well, that's still a natural spillover event. That's animal to human. Mm -hmm. That's not because of something you did in a lab. But uh, that's actually, that's, okay, fine, call it whatever you want. But that is what we're objecting to. They're going into caves to look for bats mm -hmm. because they're doing experiments mm -hmm. on them in labs. So that is still a lab leak and still something that, that affects our, even if it doesn't specifically have to do with the manipulation or the project that we set out to do, we, these encounters do, between people and like bats in caves are not naturally occurring events, except in the sense that like everything humans do is natural because we're part of nature and we manipulate our environments. But they're not things that are happening unless you're specifically sending people in those environments to do the research. I mean, sure. And that is what we're arguing about. And it, yeah. Not technically whether, yes, it, it came from an animal, even if we had not manipulated but had intended to manipulate it in some sense, that's like a very academic difference to me. Well, to, Fauci's point here is that he says if all gain of function stops, you'll have no vaccines for flu. He says, he basically says, it's not that it's not a concern, but that you have to have a totally transparent process that involves scientific input and community input and informed community input. And I, I, I am reluctant to say people shouldn't collect animal samples ever because sometimes a flu can, can have a crossover event. I think that is wild. I mean, that would be so many scientific innovations have come from studying plants in nature. Should no one go into the Amazon and find new 
you know, particular potential cures for diseases in plants and animal samples because someone might get bitten somewhere and Not cause the risk a flu. Of spreading disease is worse. <laughs> well, there's no way to know that. We wouldn't have any number of of, of, of medications if we had never t taken the bark off the tree to see if aspirin, you know, how to make aspirin. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, it gets a little absurd. Well, but okay, I think the that's initial point that Fauci is making here, that you have to be, be safe and protected, the part of the, the real scandal here, and this is this really also frustrates me, there's this jump from there could be lab leak to we got to shut down all of the science. Well, part of the critique here and the critique that has been made long before this pandemic happened is that the people who were sent into those caves weren't given protection, protective gear. People who are especially lower down on the science food chain here aren't being protected by the institutions that are relying on them to collect initial samples. Yeah, we read from a, a transcript of, of the person doing that role uh, on the show a few weeks ago, and he was saying that, he, yeah, he didn't have gloves. That's he didn't ridiculous. Have... Like, that's that's the first line of defense. Why why was this research right. being done in a lab that wasn't up to the standard of, of um, barriers and protections? There are different kinds of labs for different kind of danger levels of research, and what we found out is that this kind of research was being done in a lab where lab leaks mm -hmm. were common. Leaks from this kind of facility are relatively common. Why not put it in a higher security lab? And so it's not that I don't think that potentially we might come to the conclusion that given the risk, the rewards aren't worth it. But we are, it seems like we're so far from there. And, and, and Fauci saying, well, it has to be a safe and transparent process, knowing that it's anything but a safe and transparent process kind of el elides the question. Yeah. There was also a good discussion in there about the herd immunity threshold, where Fauci does sort of admit some real errors in his thinking there and how he messaged how likely breakthrough infections were going to be. I mean, there's a part where David uh, Wallace Wells just calls him out and says, so much of what you know you said and the public health consensus said is just not accurate. Ninety five percent of all people on Earth have had covid and 70 percent of people have had a vaccine or multiple shots. And there's no herd immunity. It's not gone. It, that doesn't happen. That doesn't work. And we don't have herd immunity for the cold either, uh, for, for uh, the flu, rather. It, it reoccurs every year. So shouldn't you have anticipated that there would not be this durable protection? And well, what do you say to uh, Fauci that? is kind of like, yeah, I was wrong. I, mean, I, I think, well, I know they're different the, viruses. The, the but. herd immunity point, they always said that it had to be a very high vaccination rate. Now, I still think it probably wouldn't have worked mm -hmm. because of breakthrough inf infections, which we now just call infections because <laughs> there's right. no protection against actually right. getting infected. Right. But you know, that, my recollection was that they were always like, well, some 90 odd percent of the population had to be vaccinated. No, for he that said to it work. at, I think he said it at 80 percent. I think that they kept changing it. I think right. that that was part of the but issue. But we all know at, at no level of vaccination number. would we have. I, I think, I think that's it right. It, it doesn't yeah, stop you from getting right. it a few weeks later. Yeah. Well, this was a fascinating report. Uh, people should read it in full. David Wallace Wells, I think, put some really important questions to Fauci. We'll have more rising for you after this.